Welcome back. Random TV Review is your girl, Lynette. And it's mm. your boy, Stanley. All right, we coming in with part two of the Love and Marriage Huntsville Reunion. Yeah. Listen, right. <laughs> I got my laugh on on this one. Listen, yeah, yeah. they could have just ended it with part two. We don't even need part three, but we'll be back here next week. Right. We'll be back. But let's go ahead and start it off. We're going to start off where we left off at on last week where Carlos King asked the question. Like, if there was an Arion before there was a Mel, would Melody even be Melody Holt? Right. And we get all the way to this, and Martel didn't do what I thought he was going to do. He actually went way worse, in my opinion. Because there is nothing worse than you knowing how someone is going to answer something or how they probably should answer it, and they just won't answer it. Right. And he refused to answer the question. He said he did not want to answer it. He knew that that would hurt Melody even more than right. saying that, yeah, there would not be a Melody Holt if there was an Arion before there was a male. He just refused to answer it. See, <laughs> dealing with somebody like him would make you go insane. Because he knows how to just cloud your mental space. But it goes back to, like you've been saying all along, both of them have the same energy about getting at people who they feel like is in their way. And <clears throat> that's the way he's coming at Mel now. The same tactics over and over again to beat each other down. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't but see I'm like you, I didn't, I didn't see him playing that move. I just thought he was going to say no. Yeah, because that hit yeah, way worse. That move. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's almost like if you saw somebody cheating and you confront them about cheating, but they still tell you you didn't see what you saw, that is a mind buck because you'd be like, I just want you to just, just say it. Like, like, like he said, say it. Say it's my leg. Say it. Right. Just say it. So that's what we got with that. So Carlos was, you know, he was trying to figure out, okay, uh, Martel. Okay, so you don't want to answer the question. So what is it about this girl and this, that, and the third? So then he turns it around on Mel and he was like, well, maybe, you know, nothing against you, but maybe you weren't everything that he needed. Maybe you weren't enough for Martel. I like when Melody checked Carlos right on the spot. She said, uh -huh. I, I, I was enough. I was enough. Mm-hmm. He couldn't leave either of us alone. And because of that, that's why I removed myself from the equation. Because he never was going to choose. Because real talk, he didn't have to choose. As long as he played his game, he had them both. Right. Because she said the only way. She said if I had stayed, he would he would have been playing both sides anyway. So he was going to continue to cheat either way. Yeah. That's what she said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this is what I do hate is when someone cheats on another person. They always try, or even some people try to reconcile within themselves. Was I enough? Did I do something wrong? You don't yeah. have to do anything wrong, and there's nothing that has to be wrong with you. Exactly. They violated. They, they made a decision to do what they did. Yeah, they are in violation. Yeah, exactly. It has nothing to do with you. Right. So I mm -hmm. love that Mar um, that our male checked Carlos. It was like, uh -uh, I was enough. Can y'all hear that rain? If y'all do... Just, just take it in because this is sleeping weather. But um, so. But often, sometimes the the actual cheater makes the person think that that they wasn't enough. You didn't say the right stuff. The sex wasn't the way I wanted it. You didn't so, give me head. And... Yeah, it's, you know, you had those common excuses all the time. That's why we didn't accept that from Martel because yeah. that's the typical stuff that mm -hmm. people say. I rather for you just say I saw another piece of puss that I wanted. <laughs> And I went and got it. Yeah. I'd rather for you be straight like that and then sit around and say, you know. Or trying to make it make you feel like you have fault in them violating right. you. So, yeah, I, I, I'm i never for it. As much as we uh, don't see eye to eye with Montel, I would, with, uh, with Montel and Mel. But I, I do feel sorry for it, though. Because yeah. And it's, yeah, I mean. Especially, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to the backstage when they had the lunch break. Yeah. That's when I really was like. It's just bucked up in so many yeah, ways. I, I, we're going to get to that. But 
Mel ended up giving us some more tea about the situation of when they were in the middle of COVID and, you know, still living their everyday life and how she said that Martel can say and do all the right things and make you think that he's on track and really make you believe that he is trying or he is a changed man. And she was like, there was a time where he had pulled his back out. She said, I'm cooking meals. I am aiding him and getting him up and down stairs. And yeah. he's having to crawl to get up and down the steps. And I catch him with a phone mm -hmm. that he don't hid somewhere that he could get to to still be in communication with her. I was like, with her. Wow. 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 If you going, like, like I said, you going through those ex that extent. To be in connection to talk to somebody, you in love with them. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. And the crazy thing about it, like most people say, he's not in love with her. It's an infatuation. It's this. No. This. What no. I will say. No. This is what I will say. Of all my training, I ain't gonna tell you what I'm trained in. But in all of my training, you kind of have to label things in a way that's a blanket statement. But there are sometimes it isn't the right word. So some people will say that no, it's not love. <clears throat> it's love to him. Yeah. So we have to label it as love because at his level of what he's doing, that's love to him. And he is demonstrating all those things. As I, crazy as it seems, that's his, that's his, I, I'm thinking about myself. His meter. That when I met, when I met you and then when I really connected with you and be like, yeah, this is the woman for me right here. And there was nothing you wouldn't do to be yeah, my Yeah, the extent, because matter of fact, at the time, we in Richmond, Virginia now, and at the time, I lived in Tappahannock. And it was, if you understand that route, that's like an hour over an hour one way. And I used to do that several times a week to come see the queen. I go all out my way. I don't care if it was rain, sleet, hail, it didn't make a difference. I was coming. And his car was barely making it. Right. So, <laughs> so when the bros do that right there, you in love. Mm -hmm. You in love, man. I'm sorry. You in love. That connection is yeah. something else. Right. And, and let's not let let's take the love word. Well, it is love. But let's take the love word off the table. It's a great infatuation to whatever energy they are given. Yeah. You are so you're connected to, to it. it you're attracted to that it. you yeah. can't let it go. Right. And you would you're in the house with your wife and your children. And you are finding ways that even in your Handicap, your temporary handicap at the moment, you're finding a way to have conversations with her. In the middle of COVID, when the world is shut down, like Carlos said, ain't no gyms open, bruh. Nah. You can barely go to a grocery store because they had that you had to go in at 20 at a time. <laughs> Matter of fact, think <laughs> about gym. Our gym tried to sue us for some money that we didn't pay when they was closed during COVID. Yeah, they put us, try to put us in collections. Trying to put us in collections. Right. Like, so, I, I said, oh, <laughs> let me go and send this to the legal team. I ain't yeah. heard from that since. Yeah, so I was no. like, how are you going to try to charge me for something when y'all not even Yeah, y'all right? closed. Yeah. Crazy. But anyway. Um, so if y'all had that happen to y'all, <laughs> just contact your good little lawyer. It'll go away. But anyway, so um, Carlos says, so Martel, is it the fact that you just can't be honest with yourself? That's and, it right there. And tell us that you are in love with her. And then Maurice hit it right on the head. I think he feels guilty yeah. about being in love with her because he know that he should. That's right. And uh, yeah, that's it right there. That was the end there. Yeah. I said, boom, <clears throat> that part right. And he even had to nod his hand to that. It was yeah. like, as much as I shouldn't be in this position and have these feelings, I do. So I don't want to admit that I do because that's admitting that I'm wrong all over again. Right. But you have all the evidence of being wrong already. Yeah. So doing that does not do it. It doesn't add anything to it. I, I was like, wow. So here's Mel was a, okay. So Carlos says, you say that this girl is the whole restaurant, the entree, the snack, you know, the wet napkin that you wipe your, your fingers with after you don't ate the ribs. So why he not with her now? Like, why is he still dating other people? Because now he's free and clear to be with her. And Martel hit it on the head. He was like, just because I not, just because I have the ability to be with her don't mean I want to marry her. And I said, in real talk, I have said this in my comments over and over again. I don't think she wants to marry him. She got.
got with that man on a tip on a temporary basis, meaning she could get him where she fit in, right, and vice versa, and really that might be all she could take of him. Most yeah. most women that put themselves in a position to be side chicks like that, they don't want them to be married. They don't want to be with them. They want the benefits. They want the benefits mm -hmm. and the temporary pleasure. Or sometimes it's the cat and mouse game. The chase is fun. The yeah. game is fun. Now that I can have you full time, I don't want that. Yeah. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. I don't conquer that now. Uh, next. What's next? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Mel said, you know, he's always said that, you know, if it he would never be with her even if we broke up anyway. So and I believe he said that. I do believe he said that. But this is look, I feel listen, yeah. it, it's just a lot. It's a bad situation either way you look it at it. It is, you know? it is. But um, like go, go ahead. Yeah. Oh. So then we get to this conversation about have any of the men been around while he was messing with this girl? So Maurice immediately said, no, he's never been in a situation where he's been with this girl. And Marceau was like, I have. We went on a guy's trip. Later on, we found out through Tisha that the guy's trip was in Atlanta. So that brought a whole lot of the yep. pieces to the puzzle together for Mel. She was like, oh. Yeah, because we was thinking all this stuff was going down in Huntsville. So there was a trip made. <laughs> like, yeah, trip. yeah. Coordination. Flights. <laughs> you and know? she just showed up. And she showed up. In Atlanta, while the guys were together on a guy's trip. But later on, we found out afterwards that Maurice was there. But Maurice doesn't consider the interaction as bad as it really was because he didn't see any inappropriate behavior going on. Right. Although you knew that this wasn't right, he didn't see anything inappropriate going on. So he didn't feel like it counted, I guess. But Marceau was like, yeah, I was there. And yeah, he yeah. didn't remove himself from the situation. He was yeah, like, he told, told he told him that, you know, this ain't this ain't it, bruh. You know, she pulled up on us at the spot. And no, that ain't what it is. And I was like, mm. So did we get yeah. into this heated thing? Yeah. Where we even had this conversation. Because it's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged. Yeah, it is. Because I've been in this situation. And I've been in it more than once. And I've handled it differently both times and each time it's a lose-lose because here it is you have somebody that you're really good friends with but collectively you are all friends this person is violating someone that you also have a relationship with you get up and you remove yourself out of the situation because now, I feel like you disrespected me too. Because at this point, you put me in a situation yeah. that now I have to either keep your secrets or feel like I have to be transparent with my other person too. So now you to put me in a whole, oh, a whole cluster buck. Yeah, yeah. So when I leave, I'm still in a cluster buck because I can't unsee what I saw. Exactly. But if I stay in the situation and just... Not cosign, but still, still be there. It's ultimately a solid way of cosigning. Mm -hmm. I've been in both situations, and at the end of the day, when everybody finds out, everybody's still mad at Lynette mm -hmm. <laughs> because either you didn't leave and you didn't tell, or you told, no. and they convinced you that you were the one that was making this up. Yeah, and everybody's still mad at you, and everybody's life goes on. Yep. <laughs> But it all spins back down. Is like you said, your friend should have never put you in that situation in the first place. Cause, yes. Yeah. So if you, bruh, if you want to cheat, do that on your own watch. Don't do that on my watch and have him in a situation where I have to make that choice. That's really? a hard. That's a hard choice, especially yes. when y'all all good friends like that. Yeah, it, that's a hard choice to make, man. So it's it's easy, like, because um, Kimmy and them said they would have walked away. Mm -hmm. Maurice said I wouldn't have walked away. Yeah, because I so had the opportunity to 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 influence. So I say either way, because at the end of the day, you wasn't the one that cheated. It was them. So why would you take and put that responsibility on you? So I say either way, whatever decision you <laughs> make losing. is a lose-lose, but... Good for you, I guess. I don't know. 
because I've been on both sides and, and both and sides sucks. I yeah, lost. Yeah, both sides suck. Both man. sides. Suck. One, the friend didn't talk to me for like three years <laughs> until they figured out that the person really was doing what I told them that they was doing. Then, you know, you don't get the apology. You get the, I miss you, sis, text. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you. but you know. But then we always put ourselves, you know, in the shoes if somebody do that to us. But what if it was us being that done to us that yeah. we did that? That's why I told friends, it one time. One of our friends, how we feel if they didn't come and tell us. That's why I told it the first time. Yeah. <laughs> then the second time, I didn't tell it because the first time, I got I got bashed. <laughs> so, it's, it's a lose-lose. But the right thing in the situation is telling the friend that you are dead a wrong. Yeah. You're that dead. part too? That right there. Now, if you didn't do that, you wrong right there because you didn't be honest with your friend. That, for sure. Yeah. Second time, I confronted that person and told them, if you don't tell them, I'm going to tell them. But then I never told them because I, I, I remember the first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but any hoodles. So, um, we get to a point where, <laughs> you know, Martell is still talking his ish or whatever, but he's not being super annoying or whatever. And so Mel chimes in and she tells, she just makes a statement. She said, basically Martell went from a Royce Royce to a Honda. And Martell... He was like, oh, no, 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 no. Because what we're not going to do is that because y'all went to the same school. So we're not going to do that. I said, oh. I was like, dang, he defending her now? <laughs> no, not now. Again. I said, that had to hurt. But, yeah, you know, it is what it is. So then we break for a lunch break. So that's when we got a lot of the behind the scenes and whatnot. And that's when <laughs> we figured out that Maurice was in that situation where he was present at that moment. And then when Marceau realizes that he kind of told on his brother just a little bit, he was like, oh, I don't remember Maurice being there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't quite recall if he was there or not. But Maurice ended up telling Kimmy, he was like, yeah, I was there. But I didn't see anything that I felt like it was so deemed inappropriate that I needed to remove myself. I knew that what was happening, the meetup will not right. <laughs> but, you know, there was no, like, hugging, and, you know, something that you just... Can't deny it, but so Kimmy was like me, and was like hold on, nah, nah, because that's a violation, like this, that, the third, like we said. Either way, it's damn if you do and damn if you don't. So this is where we <laughs> see Mel in having a really bad breakdown because we realize, like, if you've never been in that situation, you don't know how it feels. To have to go through that entire process, but still be victimized in the process and still being victimized after the process and having to be and do everything that you don't want to be and do because the system is so broken that it requires you to, to still it. be in a broken situation mm -hmm. to make things work for your children. Yeah. So she was like, you know... He, he's like this, he's manipulative, and she had this board where he's been sending her pictures ever since the divorce, and, you know, like, just, like, he knows how to get at her, and vice versa, but she had him printed out, I was like, that's a lot of work, but, um, and she's showing, this is what he does, and he constantly does stuff like this, we can't even be friends at this moment because of how he is, and she doesn't want to be in Huntsville, but because of the kids, she's forced to be it's, it's in Huntsville there. to be under his thumb, to be under the foolishness that he does, be in atmospheres that she doesn't want to be in because the system says, unless he does something really crazy and endangers his children, we won't dare yeah. put yeah. anything in place nope. to protect you and the children from him. He yep. has every right for access to his children. Yep. That's the system for you. And that is the system. It's almost like when I read this story, I think it was in DC this weekend where this lady was, I think she was in her sixties. She had been um, stalked and harassed by this man for over 20 years, 20, 30 years. Like real talk. You think about somebody in their sixties being harassed that long by somebody, an old person now, right. they old at this point. This person stalked this lady and killed her. 
She had all kinds of things in place. She had people that if they didn't hear from her at a certain amount of time to call, check on her, do call in wellness checks. And that's how they found her body was because wow. someone did not hear from her in a day and a half. And they, and she, that man who had went to jail for messing with her, but they couldn't do nothing with him, yeah. ended up murdering this lady. Yes. And, and that's that story the over. Yeah, that's the story the yeah, over and over and over so again. The system is so broken that someone has to do something for you. And that's when it's too late. To be it's protected late from now. Yeah. Because Martel is scary. I don't care and what nobody you do says. So, and you do something to them first. Then you're in the wrong. And then you're in the wrong. And then you gotta. Then when they come on your property, you got to even be careful how you deal with them. Because you still can get in trouble even at that point. Exactly. So, yeah. So, yeah, I feel bad for Mel because she is the ultimate victim in all of this and her children. She was violated and she continues to have to hold the bag to make things work because he did something. Yeah. So, let's go ahead and talk about Destiny. So, Destiny comes on the scene. It'll change the music and everything. Yeah. She came out here where she said, she said, I was looking for a hot girl summer, but it was just a little loop. Uh, loop oh, over yeah. <laughs> so, Carlos got right into it and he was like, you were reluctant to talk about your marriage and like the dissolve of your marriage. Like, what was going on and how, why didn't you want to speak about it? And she said, you know, I didn't want to speak about it because of my son. At the end of the day, because of what we see with Melody and them, I can't do nothing but respect what she said. Right. Because she may be like, oh, no, I'm not. You know, even if there was something major going on, I'm not going to say it because at the end of the day, my child can watch this back yeah. and see what's going on between my, you know, his father and myself. So I, although we want to know, like, what the heck happened? It's really not our business. Because right. I would say if my parents, <laughs> I'm thinking back to when I was in school, if my parents had did something like this and put that on reality, you know it's already bad being at school and the kids don't think your parents is that hip. <laughs> if y'all know what I'm saying. And then to have them to put that out there like that and I give the kids, yeah, give the kids something to use against them, man. They're going to have a hard time, man. I'm yeah. telling you. So, Destiny said, listen, it just didn't work. It just didn't work. We decided to to um, dissolve our marriage. And so, Carlos said, did he cheat? And she was like, no, he didn't cheat. Did you cheat? No. We had breaks. I said, so we're saying what we did on break. It don't count. Right. I caught it. I caught it. Mm-hmm. You had what they call the hall pass. I had that. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Um... So we went back and they rewound the tape back about how Martel was telling Destiny. He was like, you see, that's why he's he's divorcing you now because of your mouth. That's why I'm divorcing Mel right now because of her mouth. Y'all got too much daggone mouth for somebody to deal with. So they started talking about that. It didn't go as deep as I thought it was going to go. But basically, Martel being Martel, um, we always label Marceau as a show for this. <laughs> Y'all better put that on Martel. He was like, you know, don't no man want no woman that got all his mouth and this lip and this. Don't do anything for her to have it. That's 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 simple. And like Destiny said, Destiny said, I can bring big energy when I need to. So this is what I'm bringing to the relationship. But then we come to find out. See, this is this. The, I don't know all that happened, because like we said, we respect the fact that she's not talking about it. But he filed for divorce from her. Yeah. Three weeks after giving birth. It's like, wow. For me, dude, you couldn't wait until she was, her hormone levels had settled down. Like, legit, she just birthed a whole human. Hormones out of whack. Everywhere. <clears throat> Trying to settle into this new life. Trying to figure out who she is and who is this little human that she has to take. And you hit her with divorce papers three weeks? Yeah, that's, that's messed up. That's a lot. Yeah, that's effed up. Real effed up. Yeah. Like you couldn't yeah. wait. Yeah. So then they got on this whole thing about, you know, did you think that you hyphenating your name and not taking on his last name 
was a deal breaker for her. And, you know, and the men kind of had their say with it and everything. And we do know that's a big deal. You know, for us living in the state that we live in, it's a big deal mm. for, you know, when you have a baby to carry on the last name of the father, all that good stuff, whatever, whatever. Right. But here's my thing. And I was like, I was with Destiny with this. If it was such a problem and it was a deal breaker for our marriage, we should have never got married. Exactly. Because he knew from the jump that this is what I spoke about. Talked about this. I was going to hyphenate my name. I was not going to take his last name. So if this is what he wants to use, <laughs> then it is what it is. But he knew going in. And here's the thing. Like I said, if that was a deal breaker, then you should have never married him. Right. Then too, like like we said, it's like when you start making opinions about a situation of not knowing the other side, it would be nice to know his side of the marriage for, you know, what reason was it that you did that three weeks after? Yeah. But we don't know. We don't know. We in the dark on that. So we we only can base it off that it's effed up based upon what she told us. Yeah. But it seems yeah. like, this, like she said, there's times where they hate each other, times yeah. that they love each other. But it seems like they're trying to make this whole co-parenting thing work. Which is... And that's really, yeah, at the end yeah, of the day, that's all yeah. you can ask for. So let's get on to them God darn Whitlows. <laughs> Lord <laughs> have mercy. So, you know, Carlos was like, you know, when you are, Lord, I sound like Marta, you know. You know. Um, when you're the new couple or the new person to a group of people, to the franchise, it's always met. With a whole bunch of criticism. People don't like you. The like artists you, don't like new people. Yeah, like you have to earn your stripes. I, I agree to... We're going to have to agree to disagree on that one, Carlos. Because there's different reasons why people don't like the new person. Everybody was cool with Destiny. Because he used the, the, the um, example of Destiny and Sadar. People didn't like Destiny coming out the gate. Because... Destiny started coming for people, Kimmy. Kimmy first. <laughs> about something. So it was almost like she was trying to make her mark and gain her stripes, earn her stripes, but did it in a wrong way. But once we got to know Destiny, we were cool with her. Like everybody was like, okay, it's just Destiny. Sadark, I don't think Sadark's was malicious. Like, it was like a, the corny guy. Yeah. I'm corny. I'm corny, too. I, that's so, why I see it, yeah. Um, but it you, is what it is. It is what it is. Tiffany and Lewis now? Oh, that's a whole nother level. Because what they got is really what I say they earned for themselves. She said that, you know, social media was coming for her so hard that she's surprised she didn't jump off of a bridge. Like, Carlos was like, social media was petitioning for you to get up out of here. Because, like, they didn't like you. Hers is different. She came in there coming for people, exposing people, Mm -hmm. doing this, doing that. And Kimmy said it perfectly. You said you wanted to be transparent and you believe in transparency. But you come in telling me about me. Yeah, and nothing about you. And nothing about you. So when we do have an opportunity to say something or know something about you, then we're getting too much of your tea. No, if you want to be that transparent, don't be transparent about my ish or yeah. my family's ish. Let's let's talk about yours. Right. So basically, they they came in like we don't like new people coming into our group, thinking that you better. Yeah. Than everybody in the group. And you know more. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, In our circle, nobody is better than nobody. Mm-hmm. And the way I see it, we are on the same left, on the same playing field. Yeah. So, we get over there, and this is when Marceau was over it. I mean, Marceau was over the Whitlows. He was like, listen, listen, dude, at the end of the day, I feel like y'all are bullskitting us. And both get in the world. Like, there are things that we know and have heard, but we sit in your face and you still won't say or do or tell us anything about you. It's always about what you heard about us and things going on in our lives. He said, at the end of the day, all I know about y'all is that your son got a haircut and she didn't know about it. I said, you know what? <laughs> yeah, and then she worked for the chamber. That's like real facts. What did we know? The, and, and they've been married for 11 months. And that she came from living in, um, what was it, foster care or something? Foster something like that, yeah. Well, she had a conversation with Destiny, yeah. 
that they connected on that. So Marcel that, was like, know. "No, I know, I know a BS when I see it. Like this, whatever she's doing, she's <clears throat> she's BSing us at this point." So then they get into a conversation with Lewis, and Lewis is like, "You know, um, you have things going on in your marriage that I we could help you with if you would listen." Like we said, and we were over here laughing because we see this a lot from new couples. And Lord, don't let them be on social media. Oh, oh no. they don't build the couples page and they want to get on lives and giving people advice. You, your ink ain't even dry yet. On your marriage certificate. Not yeah. to say that you don't have valid things to say, but you... You coming from a place that... You you know all the answers, y'all. What y'all doing right now? That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. That suck, y'all. Matter of fact, I got the information you need. Yeah, that's the way they come off. Like, yes. yeah. I said y'all ain't even filed taxes together yet. <laughs> like, after you see that hit, then come talk to me. Like real facts. Like yeah, because Lewis was like he was coming off like he an expert in marriage because he's an expert at divorce because he's been divorced and Marcel was like no you're not an expert in marriage you expert in, at divorce <laughs> <laughs> he was like it's like saying okay I've lost seven games and now that I know how to win and I'm gonna teach you how to win it's like no it doesn't work like that no no and he was and, and here's the thing he may have valid things to say and valid points. But when you come off as the I'm the Mr. Know It All or I'm the Mrs. Know It All and we're so perfect and we're the, right. we're <clears throat> this is not the example I should use, but the right. Huxtables before building, you know. Yeah. Nobody wants to listen to you because and, you already don't put yourself up here and we down here. Right. We need to learn something from you. And here's the thing, I, I will take advice from anybody. Uh, anybody. I will. Come right. Right. Just because you've been married, somebody can be married a week and still can give you some good advice. You've been married for 30 years. Yep. So it ain't about the time. It's about the wisdom and the advice. But if you bring in the words arrogance like you better than everybody else, we don't want hit. Mm -mm. So then we get over there. We turn the tables a little bit. So now we're talking about the conversation about monster vaping in the bathroom. Oh. And Kimmy was like, listen, what drove me a little insane was this. <laughs> and I said the same God don't want thank Kimmy. We good when we're having a conversation. We In person, up. we good. We're good. The apologies are given. Mm -hmm. Then right after that, we see the grass cutting scene. And, you know, Lewis is talking about some, yo, if I had had that shot, things would have been a little differently. What the fuck that mean? Mm -hmm. And then when they tried to check him on that, so tell me what it is that you mean by that. Because mm -hmm. what I think I hear is... Oh, you would have been all about that life mm -hmm. if you had that look in you. But he was like, no, nah, that ain't what I'm saying. I'm talking you know, about the children. I'm talking about the children, children and, 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 you know, ain't nobody die from it. You know, it would have came off a little more like that. But, you know, but the apology is the apology. No buts. No, don't backpedal now. What you did, Lewis, back in our day and even still today, you was fronting, bro. That was you were doing. I told you, I said it's almost like him and Tiffany have a script. Yeah, because and they have to tell each other. Because the when script. you when you about that life, I don't care if you got the alcohol in you wow. or not, you would have been that person. Right off the bat. <laughs> right, matter right of fact. There. Yeah, yeah. Real yeah. facts. So we just gonna have to leave that where yeah. it is and, and just call the thing a thing. He not gonna admit that, like you said, you were fronting. Now you got called out on it. Now you made yourself. What did they say? He was wolf. What was he wolf calling? Was wolf tickets? What did, what Yo, did he say? was selling wolf tickets. Yeah, that wolf what he was tickets doing. And yep. backpedaling. Yep. And that's exactly what he did. So Tiffany is sitting there this entire time, just looking like I could be anywhere but here. We we want you to be anywhere but here, real fast. So then they, you know, they started asking Mel. Was like Mel, you know, have you ever heard anything about Tiffany's business that you know you feel that maybe could be brought to the forefront. And Mel was like, no, nah, I only know her from a business standpoint. I don't hear nothing about her business. I don't even need to know nothing about her business. I just need to know Tiffany as the person from that I met from the chamber, and that's it. Well, let's talk about the chamber. We heard that you got fired. Is that true, Tiffany? Well, I, think it was, true. I think it was... Um, Kim had one Kim brought had, that up. Kim brought that up. And she said, no. That's not true. So now we and do know. And she said that she heard that from a reputable source, source. at the chamber. I don't know if, she, if he said at the chamber. I ain't going to say that. She did. She oh, said she a did. reputable source at the chamber. That works at the chamber. That's what she said. So 
So either they lying or you lying, Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany just gave this no. Like, well, put it to you this way, Tiffany. Did they strongly force you to resign? And here's the thing. We they don't care. care. There's nothing wrong with getting fired. <laughs> People get fired every day. You can get unemployment. Yeah, it don't make a difference. Just be straight with it. Say, if they, I got fired. But, but why though? Yeah. But what, what you do? What happened? What happened? <laughs> like, real facts. That's what I want to know. So this is what we're talking about. Like, like Tisha was saying, you want us to be transparent, tell you all of our business, or you know all our business already. How you know that? That's, that's what I really wanted y'all to ask. If you know so much of our business, how you knowing it? Because the person we have in common, don't worry about it. How you know our business like that? That's what I wanted to make. Yeah. But when it's time for us to even ask you any questions, we have to ask questions to know what to ask because you ain't giving us nothing. So here go Marcel with um, <laughs> Tisha. I said, you know what? You got a point here. Why all the new people always uh, trying to come in and give us That's advice? Right. And we've been married the longest. Put some respect on our <laughs> years. Put some respect on our marriage. I said, oh. They do always do that, don't they? Because of who Marceau is and how he yeah, is. Uh -huh. yep. um, everybody feels like they need to rescue you or fix him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they do do that. And I didn't even realize that. So what else did we talk about on there? I think that was pretty much. Yeah, I'm like you. I think they could have just stopped right here. because I don't. I it would have been a strong end. I, I don't think next week is really even needed. Y'all let, <clears throat> let us know what y'all think. Y'all think next week is needed. I don't. I think they. I don't know, just, but I, I will think they could have crammed it all in, and this yeah. just made it too far. I will say, Carlos is doing yeah the thing. Like yeah. I told y'all last week, he has he's the perfect host because one, they respect him. Mm -hmm. Two, they're not going to disrespect him. Right. And three, he knows the answers before you give the answer. Yep. So even if you try to dip and dodge the answer, he gonna circle the block twice and come right on back to it. Carlos, you did that. Yes, and indeed. And on that bro. note, straight, straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up. Two down. Holla. <laughs>